السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ تعالیٰ وبرکاتہ ان اللہ و ملائکتہ یوسل علی النبی یا یوہ الدین امن صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم و تسلیمہ اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ سیدنا و نبی مولانا محمد و علیہ سیدنا مولانا محمد و اصحاب ہی وبارک وسلم صلاۃ وسلام علیہ یا سیدی یا سندی یا حبیبی یا طبیبی یا رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم و علیٰ عادکہ و اصحاب کا یا رحمت العالمین غوث اعظم بمنے بے سروں سامہ مدد قبلہ دی مدد کعبۂ ایما مدد قادری یم نعرائے یا غوث اعظم میزنم دمز شیخ احمد رضا خان قطب عالم میزنم سیدی یا مرشدی شاہ مصطفیٰ خاں زندہ باد مسلک سرکار اعلیٰ اعلیٰ حضرت زندہ باد یا الہی مسلک احمد رضا خاں زندہ باد حفظ نامو سے رسالت کا جو ذمہ دار ہے سیدی یا مرشدی شاہ مصطفیٰ خاں زندہ باد حامل فیض رضائے مصطفیٰ امداد کن صلی اللہ علیہ نبی المی و علی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلاۃ وسلام علیہ کا یسید یا سند یا حبیب یا طبیبی یا رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم و علیہ علی کا و اصحاب کا یا رحمت العالمین اور پریز از ڈیوٹر مائی اللہ درود ان سلام زپون دا موسٹ پرفیکٹ ایگزول ٹو دن گلوریفائڈ آف اللہ کریشن سیدنا مولانا محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم پیس بلیسنگز اینڈ سیلیوٹیشنز اپون دی امبیا اکرام محلب تتھار صحابہ اکرام خلف راشدین تبعین تبع تابعین ایم مشتہدین اول دوز ول فالو دی پات انٹل دا لاسٹ ڈے وی تھنک اللہ سبحان و تعالی تو از انفنٹ مرسی انٹو دا وسیلہ آف رسول اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم فور فورنگ اس دا اپرچونیٹی ٹو ریمبر ہیم اینڈ ہز بلوڈ رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اینڈ ٹرائی اینڈ لرن پائٹی فرام دا لائفز آف دا پائس الحمد للہ ٹو ڈے از دی 22nd آف رمضان اینڈ اٹ از اور سیشن نمبر 21 آف دس رمضان سیریز wherein we are attempting to learn piety from the lives of the pious. Today we will inshallah attempt further to learn piety from the lives of the pious. Yesterday during the Jum'ah lecture we tried to learn a bit more from the life of Sayyidina Mawla Ali radiallahu an and to gain his blessings as it was the day of his shahada. All these beloveds of Almighty Allah always taught the importance of being attached to the pious servants of Almighty Allah and hence we are making this effort trying to learn piety from the lives of the pious. The Sahaba Ikram are indeed, and as I've said this before many times, the Sahaba Ikram are indeed the most pious of the pious. And as we have said earlier, they gave their lives and made the ultimate sacrifice for Islam. And amongst these Sahaba Ikram was also one Sahabi Rasul by the name of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Jahsh radiallahu an. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Jahsh radiallahu an. Now, before we learn from his life, let me tell you a little bit about him. His mother, Umayma bint Abdul Muttalib, was the paternal aunt of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is also amongst, as I said, Abdullah ibn Jahsh is also amongst those personalities who migrated towards Abyssinia, in other words, Habsha, and today known as Ethiopia, when they were being persecuted by the Kufar in Makkah. He is also amongst the blessed Ashab Badr. Those, he is blessed to be amongst those who partook in the Battle of Badr. And his blessed sister, Hazrat Sayyidatuna Zainab bint Jahash, is one of the blessed wives of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Before we continue any further, let us all recite one time through the park. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Nabiyina Mawlana Muhammadin, tibbil qulubi wa dawaiha wa afiyatil abdani wa shifaiha wa nooril absari wa duyaiha wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik salim daiman abada. Now, <coughs> uh, talking about piety and learning from the pious and we're trying to look at an example from the life of some Sahaba Ikram and today uh, initially we're looking at Hazrat Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Jahash radiallahu an. Now he was, he is also that blessed personality who was the first to carry the flag of Islam in a battle and who strives sincerely for the pleasure of Almighty Allah. Now this may sound like carrying a flag, you know, it may sound like something very normal but he was carrying the flag, he was the flag bearer in the battle of Islam meaning that he was putting himself at risk because the flag was in his hand. But they did not care about that. They did not bother about their lives at that time. All they cared about was the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was the blessed personality who was the first uh, to carry the flag of Islam in a battle. And uh, Imam Sha'abi radiallahu an says, Imam Sha'abi radiallahu an says that the first person to fly the flag in Islam was Hazrat Sayyidina Abdullah bin Jahash radiallahu an. Uh, and he also says that the first amount 
the first amount of spoils of war which was distributed amongst the Muslim soldiers, amongst the Mujahideen, was that which came through Hadrat Abdullah ibn Jahash radiallahu ta'ala an. Okay, the Mali Ghanimat, which was first attained, was through Hazrat Abdullah ibn Jahash radiallahu an. Now, even in this, we can see that these beloved servants and beloveds of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not keep for themselves. They were not miserly. What they attained even as spoils of war, but rather they distributed it amongst the Muslim soldiers as is the ruling. This too was an example of their sincerity, meaning they never did something for themselves. This was their jazbah. This was their passion. And this was the passion of these great companions of Imam Al-Anbiya, Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, regarding since we talked about Hadrat uh, Abdullah ibn Jahash radiallahu ta'ala an and we are mentioning uh, his efforts for the sake of deen and his striving for the sake of deen for what you want to learn from uh, there is another one narration that uh, in the battle of Ohad during the battle of Ohad uh, he made dua he made dua and he at that time he said to uh, Ghaliban I think it was Sayyidina Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu an that why are you not making dua at this time? In other words, he was requesting some special dua. And at that time, he made dua rather. What did he say? Oh Allah, let me face such an enemy tomorrow who will be ruthless. Let me face such an enemy who will be ruthless. And when I'm martyred, when I'm made shaheed, let them severe my nose and my ears. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. Look what he's saying. Let them, even if they martyr me and they cut off my ears and my nose, etc. Let that happen. Let such a ruthless person be the one responsible for killing me. So that on the day of Qiyamah, when I rise before you and you question me regard this, then I should say that they were cut off and severed in your way and in the way of your beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah, subhanallah. This is something very important to think about because it shows the aqidah of the Sahaba of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look, he is saying something very important here. He is saying that when I am martyred, it must be by the hands of some ruthless person so that he does this and this to me. And why? So that on the day of Qiyamah when I rise and Allah questions me about this, then I will say that this was severed in your way and the way of your beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In other words, he's, he's, he's showing his sincerity in the court of Allah and his Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But something else that comes out of this, look at the Aqidah of the Sahabi and which is the reality that they knew and they believed that you will be risen in the manner in which you die. You will rise in the manner in which you and in the state in which you die, in which you pass away. So they, did, they wanted to be made shaheed in the way of Allah and they wanted them to be in this condition so that when they rise in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their, their, their condition of shahadat itself will be testimony that they sacrifice their lives for the pleasure of Allah. And in the love of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And this is something very important that we all should pay attention to. That the fact that you will be risen in the way, in the manner in which you die, in the state in which you die. Now look at us today. How many people spend in 24 hours in a day, and I've talked about this before and I'm repeating it because of this narration. How many of us in 24 hours in a day spend majority of that day for the pleasure of Allah and the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? question to be asked I ask myself and I ask you to ask yourself in 24 hours how many hours do we sleep 8 hours 6 hours 10 hours 12 hours 14 hours how many hours do we sleep number one how much time do we spend for our salah five times a day 20 minutes 25 minutes per salah even that rush through in most cases okay so even if we're praying our salah I'm giving maximum 30 minutes I'm being I'm being generous in the amount of time that people use for their salah. 30 minutes, 30 times 5. 5 salahs a day. How many? Just over 2 and a half hours. Okay? 2 and a half hours. From 24 hours for salah. How much time do we spend reading Quran? How much time in the 24 hours is for Tilawat? How much time is for na- the Durood Sharif upon Rasulullah Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How much time is to do our help in the household chores? How much time is to do everything else that we do? Think about it. In 24 hours, how much of time do we spend doing good? And how much of time do we spend in guna? How much of time on social media? How much of time on our phones? 
doing whatever we're not supposed to do. Think about it. Let's ask ourselves the question. So when you ask yourself the question, now the answer, why am I talking about all this? Because you will be risen in the state in which you die. So if you spend more time in guna, there's a fear, that the greater fear and a bigger risk that you will die in that state. And if you spend more time doing good things and in the remembrance of Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then there is a greater chance and a possibility that you will pass away doing those good things. So why do we want to spend and waste our time doing wrong, knowing that there is a risk that we will die in this condition more? And then on the day of Qiyamah we will be risen. Can you imagine being risen in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing guna, Allahu Akbar. Being risen doing haram. Being risen, those people, Allah, Allah forbid, this is the month of Ramadan, people should make tawbah, we should all make tawbah. Imagine Allah, Allah na kare, but what about those, and, and may there be no Muslim that's doing this, uh, even in the month of Ramadan, uh, worse than any other time. Somebody who makes zina, somebody who commands adultery. Imagine they're making zina and you die in that state. How will you rise in the court of Allah? Imagine you're sitting with bad mazhabs, with deviants, and you're having cups of tea with those who slander the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and who don't believe in this awliya of Allah and the Sahaba Ikram. Imagine sitting with those who reject Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq and Hazrat Umar Farooq. Imagine reading namaz behind those who say that the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam cannot be of any assistance to you and the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is better to Allah think of an ox and donkey namaz than to think of your Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Those who have written these things and say these things and we still sometimes people want to read namaz with them. Befriend them. I'm asking if you die in this state, you will be risen in the court of Allah. What defense do you have? What defense do you have? But if you spend time with the pious, وَكُونُوا مَعَ الصَّادِقِينَ If you attach yourself to the pious, then inshallah you will be risen amongst the pious. That is why the Sahaba Ikram, Hazrat Sayyidana, Abdullah ibn Jahash, wished this that even if he should be made shaheed and this should happen to him in this manner, then he wouldn't mind and he wanted that because then he would rise in that way in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now subhanallah, again look at what dua they made and how they wished for shahada. As they knew that this was solely for the pleasure of Almighty Allah and the love of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We should think about all this. Today we are unable to do basic things and make basic sacrifices for the sake of Islam. And when we do make any sacrifice, then we think that we have done uh, something very big. Yet whatever we do cannot compare to the sacrifices of these beloved servants of Allah. And look at what they did. Look at why they did whatever they did. They did not do so for the dunya. They did so to please Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and not for the name and fame of this world. Because they know this world is going to come to an end. It will become fana. Nothing will be left. And this is one very important lesson which we have, we have been learning during these sessions from them. Tonight, inshallah, Lazim marks the 23rd eve, the eve of the 23rd of Ramadan. As you know, the eves in Islam, the eve comes before the day. So it's the 23rd eve of Ramadan and we will mark another odd night from amongst the blessed and last 10 odd nights of Ramadan and Mubarak wherein our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam encouraged us to strive to seek out the night of Qadr and to attain its blessings. But sadly, we are not even able to sacrifice the sleep of one night or even half the night to seek out such great blessings. Many cannot do it. The blessed companions, think about it, the blessed companions put their lives on the line to serve the deen. And to serve the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with sincerity and devotion. They knew that the greatest honor was to be in the service of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This can be observed when taking a glimpse into the lives of Sahaba Ikram Ridwanullah Al-Majmain. And one such beautiful example is from another Sahabi of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hazrat Amir bin Fuhaira radiallahu ta'ala an. Hazrat Sayyidina Amir bin Fuhaira radiallahu an. It is reported from Hazrat Asma bin Te Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anha. That when the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made hijrat, when he migrated from Makkah to Madinah Munawwara, then on the way, the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh, stayed in the cave of Thawr in Ghari Thawr for three nights consecutively. And during this time, the free slave of Hadrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh, Hazrat Amir bin Fuhaira radiallahu anh, who used to graze sheep and his goats, would go to them in the cave at night. He would stay the night there. Some narrations say that he would give them milk from the goats. He would milk the goats and give the milk to the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and, the, and Hazrat Abu Bakr. But he went there to serve them. He would stay the night there at the cave. And in the morning, and in the morning, he would uh, again join the other shepherds in the grazing area. How did, how did he do this? Was that at night, when all the shepherds would return towards Makkah, he would join them. But he would slack down and drop his speed. He would lessen his speed. In other words, he would walk very slowly. And when the darkness of night would appear, he would sneak away with his goats 
and go to the cave of Thawr and the shepherds would think he was still amongst them. Subhanallah. Look at what he would do in the love of Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at what he did in the love of Nabi, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He knew that if the kuffar found out about what he was doing, they would not spare him. But still he did it for three nights as he wished to be in the khidmat of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he knew like all the other Sahaba Ikram that this was his means to salvation and that through the service of Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he would secure his place in Jannatul Firdaus. This is how the pious servants of Allah taught. Okay? This was their sincerity and their love which they had for Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this was their devotion. They knew that there is nothing in life more valuable than being in the service of Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they knew that Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the soul of life and soul of the entire universe. Subhanallah, how fortunate they were. This is how fortunate they were that they were regarded as shepherds amongst their people, but they are in fact leaders of the pious. They were regarded as shepherds amongst their people, but they are in fact leaders of the pious and amongst the most noble of men. This is through the blessing of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These beloved servants of Allah, like Hadrat Amir bin Fahira radiallahu an, were blessed with excellence that even when they passed from this world, they were honored in unique and blessed ways from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All this was because of their true love. For Sayyidina Rasulullah and this is the greatest lesson I told you that we can learn from these companions. Hadrat Imam Zahri states that Hadrat Ubay bin Qa'b bin Malik uh, <coughs> informed me that Nabi Karim وسلم, sent out a delegation towards the Bani Sulaim tribe. And amongst this delegation was also Hadrat Amir bin Fuhaira. Okay? Amir bin Tufel sent out an army against the delegation of, uh, of, 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 of this delegation at Bir Ma'una and Hadrat Amir bin Fuhaira radiallahu an was martyred. Imam Zuhri was made shaheed. Imam Zuhri says that I have been informed that after Hadrat Amir bin Fuhaira radiallahu an was made shaheed, the people could not locate his blessed body. They could not find his jism mubarak and they, they, they searched but they could not find it and they realized that the angels had buried his blessed body. And it is mentioned in another narration that after he was martyred, his blessed body was raised towards the sky and Amir bin Tufail himself mentioned that he saw the body of Amir bin Fahira being raised towards the skies. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Look at the reward which he received due to his honor and love for beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and for sincerely serving the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And even after making the ultimate sacrifice, he was still granted such excellence that the angels carried his blessed body into the heights of the skies. All this they achieved and attained because of the greatest lesson which they all taught. And that was the lesson of the love of Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We should learn from these beloved servants of Allah and strive to increase our love and attachment to the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the way of doing this is to be attached to those and to be in the company of those who are the beloveds in the court of Almighty Allah and His beloved Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. On nights like these, the odd nights like the eve of the 23rd tonight, we should make more ibadat and sacrifice our time and our sleep and our luxuries so that we may present ourselves in the court of Almighty Allah. Is it too much for us to sacrifice time which Allah has in fact given us and sleep which Almighty Allah has blessed us with? Remember, the day will come when each of us will close our eyes. One day is going to come when each of us will close our eyes and these eyes will only open again in our graves. When all will leave us alone to face the angels of the Qabr. If we sacrifice our sleep and our rest, and strive in Allah's ibadat and in the love of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then indeed, when we reach our graves and our eyes do open again, then it will be as Sayyidi Allah Hadrat radiallahu anhu wished, ke jab raza khabe gira se sar uthaye, dawlate bedar ishke mustafa ka saath ho. And as our murshid, Huzur Sayyidi Taj Sharia radiallahu anhu so beautifully said, that when the angel of death appears, and you are, give, you are given the opportunity of making ziyarat of Rasulullah, making ziyarat of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at that time, then you will release your soul. And then what will happen when you leave this world in this love of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Hadrat says, Aap ki talat ko dekha, jaan li, qabr mein pauncha, to dekha, aap hai. May Allah give us tawfiq e khair to understand and learn these beautiful lessons from the pious servants of Allah. Uh, there's a, the, the ruling for today that we've been mentioning after the sessions. Uh, it's a ruling, I think, probably I must have mentioned before, but I'm repeating because somebody has asked me this question today. If a person paid, the question is, if a person paid the fitra of his wife and his nabali, and a wife and his balikh children, in other words, his children who have reached the age of puberty, without, the permission, without their permission, will it be counted as being discharged? 
The answer to this is, if a person paid the fitra of his wife and his body children without their permission, it will be counted as being discharged on condition that the children are from his ayal. In other words, his dependents who he is responsible for maintaining. In other words, the provisions etc. of those children are, his, children are his responsibility. Otherwise, it will not be regarded as being discharged if he does so on behalf of his children without the permission. If the wife paid the fitra of her husband without his authority, it will not be discharged. She will have to take the permission of her husband and then she can pay that fitra and then it will be discharged. Do not forget to pay your fitra. The, in South Africa, the, the, the basic fitra right now is working out between 20 and 25 rand. But for Nafai Fakir, for the benefit of, of the person that you're giving it to, increase it so that those who you're giving it to can, can get uh, more barakat in the lockdown town time now because all the ban on cigarettes and everything else. I'm sure people are paying double and triple, you read in the papers, for a pack of cigarettes. If we can pay so much for that, why can't we pay fitra and give a little bit extra so that it is benefit for us in this dunya and it will be a blessing for our roza as well. Allah keep us with Iman. Let us leave this world with Iman. Wa ma'alina al-bulaq. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.